off to the Berg. I'm hoping to see some low level snow. It's not likely, we're going to take a trance anyway. There's the sunrise. It's a uh, chilled seven degrees this morning as we're coming through Peter Maritzburg. Something we've noticed that's increasing lately is the amount of trucks on the road. It's incredible. You you lose count quite quickly just driving between towns. Sitting at four degrees at the moment, even just uh, past the Sadara turn off. Three degrees now, so we might get lucky with a bit of snow. Probably not. We may have to venture up Sony Pass into Lesotho to look for it. We'll see how time goes. The main reason we're heading out here in the cold is. I don't know if you can see, but we've got a trailer on the back of the car and I need to test how that thing is going to handle the cold weather. We recently picked up a Jetstream teardrop trailer to replace our traditional ground tent camping. The sun is starting to come out quite nicely now. You can see the that warm glow on the trees. Still pretty nippy here in the car. Not the weather we're used to living on the, on the east coast. For us, it kind of only ever drops down to like 9, 10 degrees. We're coming up to Underberg now. It is frightfully cold out here for us, so we drop down to about zero as we pass Boston Bulwer. We're sitting on uh, one degree now at the moment and enjoying the scenic views out here. You can see the snow on the, the Drakensberg and there's a lot of mist behind us. It's really pretty. One thing I've noticed towing the trailer, although it's not very heavy, it affects our fuel consumption and it also affects the performance of the van. The altitude effects that are already but uh, with the trailer now, I found myself dropping to fourth gear where previously I'd only be at fifth. I don't know if you can see on the GoPro the snow up, up ahead there. Our window's frosting up now as well. up Sony now looking for a little bit of snow but it's gotten a lot warmer we're on 11 degrees so I don't think we're gonna find any there's some high level snow that we can see on the top of the mountains but yeah no luck for us today far too warm it's still beautiful out here though
snow on the ground. Got a little bit of a frozen river there. Did you get your boot full of water now? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Come back the other way. I'm pretty... Yeah, we're going to go up that side now. I'm pretty sure this oak just got a, a boot full of cold water there. Okay, we definitely found the snow. There's not a hell of a lot of it left, but happy days. I'm going to quickly head back to the pub at the top of Sony Pass, get something to eat, let the kid play a bit, and then we'll make our way back down. The snow is melting really quickly. We were going to go up Black Mountain, but I decided, you know what, with the rates that this snow is melting, it would just be a lot better for us to use what there is now and then we'll go take a drive to Black Mountain after lunch. We are currently about 2,900 meters above sea level. Here is our little jet stream teardrop. So we picked this up second hand, done a bunch of work to it. I'll do a video on what I've done inside here for the battery. But this is how it sets up. We came fully off grid. We've set it up so that if we don't use this, I can still camp off grid with this. So water, power, solar, fridge it's got its own awning it's a howling moon swallow awn so this full awning fits into this 1.2 meter bag it comes with a fiberglass table which is adjustable so it can become part of the galley the kitchen or it can sit on the side here we did a few modifications. I'll try and throw up a picture in here to show you what it looked like before, but there used to be a flat surface here with a 220 volt fridge. We changed it to a 50 liter 12 volt. We lost a lot of storage space, but it's much better now. So our water tank sits underneath here. It's 55 liters on demand 12 volt pump. And our next build out will be to remove all of this and fiberglass this all up, have cupboards and drawers and a microwave that runs off of the dual battery system. Inside, we've got tons of storage. Inside here there's not really anything specific, neither is there in here. We don't need all of the storage space, so it's just a matter of shoving stuff everywhere. I mean, this is the third time we're using it, so we're still sussing it out. So, um, we're cold weather camping, so what we've done to make sure we don't freeze, it's supposed to be minus five tonight, is underneath the mattress there is a foam insulation pad, full depth, and we run one, 
two duvet, a duvet, a comforter, and then there's a Alex's fleece and a 12 volt electric blanket. We have spare blankets and warm clothes and towels, my wife's clothes, my clothes, storage there as well, and we've got a radio with two 6 by 9s for ambience. Very nice little touch light. And that's it. Lots of stuff coming, um, but for now it works really, really, really well. We're out here at Cobham, which is an Esm Villa Reserve in the Drakensberg. I'm not going to talk much about it. I have a video of this place already. We come here often. Uh, it's a it's our base camp for Sony Pass. It's 20 to 4, so the sun's going to start going down. But yeah, that's our that's our new setup. Still have the Oz tent for the odd occasion. Hey, Daddy, I'm going to set it, and you're going to chop it around. Come here. I'm just going to one check his knuckle. Up and down. Eh? I did it! I did it, Mom! Well done, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> you Your dad's face is less impressed. Yes. Are you proud of me? Well done, I am proud of you. Yeah. Okay, stop. Stop, stop, stop. I want to show you something now. Now you hold the wood. Yeah, I do have a that piece. Go! Watch your face. Oh, yeah! Go. Okay. Twist it down the side of you. My friend! What are you doing there, Kira? I'm just Don't put it, but you're going to melt that plastic, eh? Where are you going? Careful. Check that sunset, that's pretty cool. You can just see the snow on the mountain with the sun sunset behind it. That's that's lovely. It's gonna get cold now. Really cold. I see my wife and my lighty burning my meat. Bro, what is happening? This is our little off grid setup so far in the trailer. Still a work in progress. We've got uh, red lights. We've got a a fan, and this fan uh, it's very cold, Dad. works really well. Dad. And it oscillates. And we've got an electric blanket. So yeah, and that's all off grid. So you put that off. Red light for the kid, night light. I haven't figured a way of securing these on yet. So they just stuck on with the press stick, which doesn't work too bloody well in the cold. But I don't want to pop rivet them on or glue them on permanently. And then I decide I don't like the way they look. So that is a a work in progress. I might move them and actually put them up here permanently and then run the wire through the the padding there. We'll see. But yeah, so 
our main luxuries are there. We've got a fan, we've got red lights, white lights, and we've got electric blankets all off of a lithium battery. So, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this clearly, but that's 96% remaining. And we are pulling 5 amps currently. That's with the electric blanket on. I've got the lights on, all the lights. Outside lights, inside lights, red lights. So we're drawing 5 amps. 101 amp hours remaining. And we're all good. Uh, in terms of exterior lighting, we're pretty well covered. Um, we have the trailer lights, which is obviously the amber and white configuration, so that's the white. More than enough light to see what you're doing. Attracts a huge amount of bugs. That's the amber, much less light. But attracts a few less bugs, and then obviously the red on my bucky awning attracts virtually no bugs. And it's far brighter than both. The issue is the red light is a harsher spectrum for us to uh, focus and visualize things in and you lose that uh, proper color perception. So if you're looking at something under the red light that's red, green or blue, you can hardly make out what color it is, which becomes frustrating at times, but you get used to it. Whereas if you move under the white light, obviously you can see every color that you're supposed to see but you run the risk of attracting a lot of bugs the lucky thing for us now is it's very cold and the seasonal change means there's a lot less hojos missioning around so we can get away with leaving the white lights on hey man see a demon in my trailer these uh, red lights I got are actually rock lights. They're supposed to go underneath your car. You know what all the, the cool kids do? They put them in their wheel arches and then they put them on and it's supposed to make your car look cool. But all it does is make this massive black shadow out here and then like a little bit of light on each side and apparently it looks fantastic for Instagram. Uh, I personally much prefer them over there. Functional light. Look at that. I mean, it's wonderful. Ah, oh, no. Whoa. Alright, we've ended off our little one-nighter. The temperature didn't get as low as we anticipated. Uh, it did drop to minus two. We were only scheduled to hit minus four. Between minus four and minus six. So we almost got there. The good news is, man, it's warm as you'd like it to be inside the trailer. We had no issues. Uh, we actually got a little bit too hot during the course of the evening because uh, my wife woke up at half past one and thought she switched our electric blanket off only to find in her wisdom she turned it from low to high and that's why we were kicking the blankets off last night so at least the trailer's insulation works we've got nothing to worry about did you see the crown cranes there love? and uh, we know now that regardless of how cold it gets with the appropriate layers we, we will manage quite fine in any case that's pretty much the end of this trip so we'll catch you in the next one